damn I'm good. You are. What do you call me? Uh, Super Nash. Super Nash. Well, you've uh, rang Spray Foam Solutions in regards to uh, insulating this uh, room you have here. What was the reason behind wanting to use Spray Foam Insulation? So, the, um, my basic principle here was that uh, this is a just a, a shed or a brick, a single brick veneer, uninsulated room. Yes. I have a feeling that condensation is going to be an issue. And we, we didn't we see that insulated. this morning. We, 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 you know, first thing this morning at 8 o'clock even still, we. We had a, a large amount of moisture build up on this iron roof. Yep. Um, and previously, it's had size isolation paper, yep. which you have removed. But yep. um, something a lot of people don't realise, John, is that uh, that dew point is still there, yeah. even with the, the size isolation paper in, in place. Yeah, it's just that you don't obviously see it because it's in between the paper and the and the steel. Yeah. So, so when I was exposed it, when I was removing the size isolation or the sarking. Uh, I actually got drenched a couple of oh, times, wow. yeah, so wow. the, the, it was building up on that size isolation yeah. and it looked like there was mould yeah. uh, growing on it as well, yeah. which is a bit of a concern. But even the carport gets uh, condensation, That's it's completely true. outside and well ventilated, yeah. so it just goes to show that ventilation doesn't help. Yes, that's exactly right. Well, that's good. Well, hopefully what we'll do today is uh, we're going to install a closed cell foam. It's what we call in the US a, a two pound density foam. It's two pound per cubic feet of foam. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, there's no cell structure, so to speak. Yep. Um, it is a, a dense, hard foam. So we're going to install three inches in this application. And what we're going to obviously do is we're going to just go around the edges and completely fill up any gap that you can see. Oh, that's great to obviously stop any air infiltration. Yep. Obviously it's all good and well to have good insulation, but you also need to take into consideration air infiltration, yep. which is obviously what we're gonna do here. So now, so now that's the other thing that really sets apart normal insulation with foam insulation. That's correct. Is yes. that uh, you don't actually, you, you have a lot less infiltration of air going through the, the insulation, yes. through the material. That's so right. conventional insulation where they're tested in a laboratory on how well they're insulating, in the real world, there's a lot of air moving around in those environments and it actually degrades the performance of those types of insulation. Well, so that was true. the other idea for me that spray foam could help yeah. uh, where, where I don't need as thick Yes. Uh, a, a spray of foam yep. and I get the, a similar type of R value to insulations that you put in a roof. You do, you do, that's for sure. Now, you know, R values are, uh, it's, a, it's a very touchy subject if you speak to anyone within spray foam industry. Uh, we've been pushing for a long time both here and overseas to have it measured in a different form. Yeah. Only reason being is that um, you know you can have an R6, which is it's is, it's being called up these yeah. days. Yeah. You know an R6 ceiling bat, which yeah. is probably nearly a foot and a half thick. The problem with that is that the R6 still leaks air. Yeah. So it's not a true indication, as you said. You know when when we look back at refrigeration, uh, heating duct yeah. work, things yeah. like that. You know, your foam in your fridge is only three quarters of an inch thick, yeah. you know, less than 25 mil. Yeah. Uh, and that obviously, you know, does a good job for what it is. You know, cool room panel, heating duct work is only paper thin, it's foam, it's, it's, it's an airtight seal. In this situation, uh, you're obviously going to achieve a thermal barrier, yeah. but you're also going to achieve an air barrier. Yeah, yeah. So That's we're going to cool. sort of kill two birds with one stone. Why spray foam is probably so successful, I mean, through Europe and through the US, it's been around a long time. You, when, yeah. you, when you research polyurethane foam, it has been around since the 1800s. It's yeah. not something new, or late 1800s, early 1900s. It's not a new product, it's not a new system. No. All it is is that it's been refined mm. over the years. Mm. Why spray foam is, is probably so successful is that the fact that you can build a conventional style home basically out of timber and, and use your external building materials. And when we came in, we obviously sprayed the external walls, mm. roof lines, and, mm. uh, and it's fully insulated from top mm. to bottom. Mm. So it's completely And, and also inside the roof, so yes. just underneath the roof, whereas yeah. the majority of the R value that is you get in these ceiling. buildings is on the ceiling. Yes, so we actually mm. stop the heat entering the roof space. Generally, in a, in a residential build, we do use a lot of open cell foams, yeah. which are they have a bubble, a cell structure. Yep. So they're great for acoustic as well as thermal. 
yet, uh, but we do spray it down the sides, roof line down to the top plates to seal that. Yes. So we essentially stop the heat entering the roof space. Yeah. You're still obviously gonna have, you know, four or five degrees worth of temperature difference between living and, and roof space, but we do actually stop the temperature getting yeah. into the roof yeah. space. And, and that completely stops condensation. So just a tiny little gap with normal bats yes. means that condensation is there. absolutely gonna still form That underneath. will still be a problem, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's so, just that it's so normally just, hidden. Yeah, that's right. So it'll it'll take some time for it to actually build up where you will actually see evidence of it, you know, coming well, through the look, plaster. I, I, Either that or you could go for seven years and you won't yeah, even notice look, it. Well, you know, I've got builders that today, you know, in the, in the way that builds are done, there's a lot of flat roofs and a lot of very low pitched roofs. And, you know, back in the old days, they were 30 degrees. Mm. Well, there's a lot of flat roofs being built now. And, um, you know, I've got builders that will only use spray foam for the fact that they've been down that path mm of uh, pulling ceilings down and, and bats and pulling the bats out and having them just rotted out and smelly and yuck. And it also changes the air quality of the build when you have bats and, and things like that with a fibre. Yes, people say that the walls are plaster, but you still have down lights, you still have holes, you know, manhole covers and things like that where that fibre can come down and you're breathing that. Where Yeah, well, but, but dude, you can even get ducted heating systems that are not very well sealed. That's to very the, true. I see it every day of the week when I'm spraying floors. Yeah, you know, I get under there and the under crawl spaces and you see that the duct work is very, you know, it's broken down. Yeah. And it's just and you're inefficient. Just, you're just sucking air from yeah. up in the roof and putting it straight through your house. That's correct, yeah. Where you've got condensation forming and black mould yes. and whatever have you. So yeah, it's quite a few, um, there's quite a few benefits, isn't there? There is, yeah. But it's absolutely pivotal to get that insulation layer right up against this material. That's exactly right. That's, uh, you know, for the last probably three or four years, container homes have become a very, very a popular item to build and uh, spray foam to me, uh, and, and I'm not being biased in any way, shape or form, but I can't think of any other product that actually adheres mm -hmm. to the substrate. Yep. I mean, it's all, you know, Styron's a great insulator, don't get me wrong, so, so is a lot of the board systems around, great insulators. But unless you can adhere it to the substrate, you're not gonna stop the dew point. Yeah. So you need to get the material to adhere. How does it do with movement? Well, two pound foam yep. is a very dense material in a floor system, if we're talking about residential floors and things that twist and move and carry on, I really am pretty fussy on the material that I use. And I generally use an open cell foam, yep. which has a lot of flex and a bit of ability to okay. move around. So that the, uh, it has the, a cell structure. So the closed cell doesn't, it's I wouldn't more suggest, rigid. yes, it's a very rigid Too foam. Rigid. Look, it depends who you talk to, you know, like there's still a lot of people in the cold climates, you would say, you know, more Canada and Eastern, you know, certain parts of Europe that would use only closed cell foams. Uh, and that's because of the, the climate. But in our sort of climate, you know, we're talking hot degrees on a 40 degree day and, you know, we're not very rarely in sub-zero. So open cell is more than efficient. It's more than enough for, for flooring systems or for residential. Another reason why I do like it is that the fact that if you get a leaking shower base or a leaking pipe or you're, you need to get your, to your electricals, it's a very soft foam. You can pull it apart very easily, but it is flexible. It is a semi-rigid foam. So Nash, what about fire? Like how do these foams work with regard to fire? So basically our foams are all tested mm -hmm. um, here in Australia. Right. Uh, I do work in the US and I, 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 uh, one of my jobs over there is actually working for a company that uh, do bas basically fire testing for all the foams that have come out on the market. So right. that's, that means every time a, a little tweak gets done to the foam or they want to change the chemical structure of the foam, it's all got to go back through testing and, and, and get all done through fire testing. So we are using a zero flame spread index right. uh, foam. Yep. Now by no means, like I say, is that uh, going to be fireproof, right. but it does have a zero flame spread index. Right. So basically if you hold a flame to the, mm -hmm. to the, to the material, yep. it will burn, it will smolder. Yep. You take away the ignition source, yes. uh, it goes out. Oh, wow. okay. So by no means, like I say, it's, yeah. it's fireproof. And you know, I do get a lot of calls in regards so to- So does, it get, does it get an actual fire rating? Uh, we can't, it's, here in Australia, we have a, a so-called bell rating oh, yeah. on external building materials. Yeah. Now, spray foam doesn't need to fall into that category because it is not an exposed building material. Okay. So your external building materials uh, what's exposed to, yeah, the, yeah. to the elements and okay. to, the, to, the, to the fire. Foam doesn't need to comply to a bell rating. Okay. Even you'll find in a lot of subfloors these days, 
you know, the code actually asks for the external building material to go all the way down into the dirt yeah, okay. so that amber attacks and things can't uh, ignite under the floor and, and cause it the fire from the bottom up. Wonderful. Well, that's answered that all question. All right, well, let's all get right. into it. Let's break some foam. All right, so show us what you've done here. Okay, well in this application, we've used a closed cell foam. Yeah. This is what you'd call a, a two pound foam. It's two pound density. So what we've done is spray three inches of foam on the roof, which was a metal deck roof. So what this has done is it stopped the dew point. Um, it's also supplied an air barrier, thermal barrier, and moisture barrier all in one. Uh, on the walls here, we had external brickwork. So here we installed two inches of Again, a fire rated closed cell foam. Uh, and this has basically made the building envelope. We've created an air cell or a, a structure that's completely airtight, which is obviously gonna be very easy to heat and cool. It's great, it's a good finish. Thank you, yeah, well look, I mean, um, obviously finish, you know, in a lot of cases isn't too important because it yeah. does get covered up and it yeah. does get covered over, but it's really the cell structure that you look at within the foam. Uh, we've been doing a lot of prop work lately, actually, um, caves, and we actually wow. d d do a lot of um, stuff for artists and things yeah. where they carve the materials. But yeah. uh, a lot of that is actually Left we're looking open. for the uh, for the texture and the yeah. finish of the foam. Nash, I probably should have asked you before I asked you to spray foam this room. What sort of qualifications have you got? <laughs> That's a good question, John. We started off in. Uh, training over in the US for Demolek USA. Yeah. Now uh, they are basically certified for sprays. Without that certification back in those days, you couldn't spray foam. Yeah. Uh, well, a Demolek product anyway. So uh, I was originally involved with the Demolek scheme over here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was trained and licensed by Demolek. Right. Uh, in recent years, that was way back in the 2000s. And then uh, probably every three or four months, I head back to the US yeah. and uh, keep up the speed with it all. Uh, from the outside, from us obviously going back back and forth, and yeah. uh, I also work for a testing company over there in the US that uh, keeps us up to speed with that. So um, your qualifications is is a good question because um, at the end of the day, we we are supplied of raw material. It, it's basically two chemicals, and and there are horror stories out there, and nine times out of ten the horror stories start through bad application. Yeah. So it's very important that you ask your contra contractor. Uh, what, what sort of qualification do they have? And, and look, I mean, it's all good and well to sit in Australia, but the industry is really overseas. Like if you're gonna be trained and licensed, um, you've got to go overseas to do that. Now in the US at the moment, there is newer uh, accreditations come through and you've actually got to be SPFA certified now. I am an SPFA member, but haven't done the certification uh, because of my Demolek experience uh, and been spraying for nearly 15 years. So really hasn't uh, been pushed the issue hasn't been pushed here in this country, so to speak, but it's always a good question to ask when you're employing a, a contractor, especially a spray foam contractor, because they are, it is, a, it is an art, you're dealing with temperatures and pressures, and uh, the quality of the foam is determined by temperatures and pressures, air temperatures, air pressures, all plays a big part. Once you've spray foamed it on, it's, it's there for good, right? Basically, yes, look, spray foam is there for the life of the build, and that's what I sort of explain to people, is that yes, it may be you know, a little bit more expensive than your conventional style installations, but it works for one, and it's there for the life of the build. You're not gonna be doing it again in five or 10 years time. So basically, once it's installed, providing it's installed properly and, and correctly, it's there for the life of the build.